All right, and we are live, everybody. Welcome to the Rancho Baking Frenzy for Good Friday. Hope you all are having a good day. Got a lot of things I want to get accomplished uh, here today in the uh, kitchen. First and foremost, I want to prepare a dough to make a baguette. And I'm going to start the dough now. And probably in 12 hours, hi Richard, this will be baked off this evening when we make uh, do our teeny weeny micro string bikini baking with Jinx's Trey Elegant's uh, strawberry shortcake. So it's going to be a busy day today. Hey Corey, nice to see you. Yeah, we're in a little baking frenzy, farm girl, or uh, AKA little debbie huh <laughs> nice to see you so basically we're going to be on the air i don't know maybe uh, uh we're going to knock off a lemon meringue pie this afternoon hi lois we're going to be taking that down to the boss and janet's for uh easter uh we're going to be celebrating actually easter tomorrow night and then coming back on easter sunday so i want to pre-prepare this lemon meringue pie and then tonight we can make Jinx's uh, strawberry shortcake and bake off the bread that I'm going to be taking down to them tonight. So the first thing I want to do is start preparing the bread dough so that it has the chance to, uh, to rise through the day. It's going to have multiple rises. And then tonight, hi Jasmine, nice to see you, honey. And then tonight we'll bake off that baguette as part of uh, this evening's baking. So it'll be a fun time. Three things to do, a baguette, a lemon meringue pie, and a super elegant strawberry shortcake. So it's gonna be a busy, busy day. And then in between, we're gonna go out, um, hit a restaurant supply store, and then uh, you know a few things that I want to pick up there, and then we'll do Friday night foodies. It is Good Friday. I'm fasting all day today, so we'll go out and have fish and chips or some uh, some vegetarian uh, thing tonight. So welcome to all of you. There'll be people in and out all day, and then tonight at 9 p.m. on the West Coast, midnight on the East Coast, we'll be cranking up to produce that uh, strawberry shortcake. So it should be a fun day for everybody today so nice to see all you guys i'm going to get my uh cuisinart stand mixer gone here because well i'm just too lazy to go ahead and uh, do it all the uh do all the hand eating and stuff and this produces a very good loaf of uh french bread here tried to move that over so get a little more in there so what i want to do First of all, is wash my hands very thoroughly. And you, oh, thank you, Jasmine. Nice to see you, honey. It's very important when you're a baker or you're working in restaurants or things like that to really, really clean your hands thoroughly before you do baking. You don't have to do it all the time. Just after handling eggs, <sighs> I have washed all of the uh, tea towels here so that are all nice and clean. In addition, since I'm preparing to make the lemon meringue, okay, honey, see you, Corey. Since I'm preparing a lemon meringue pie, I've also had five eggs that are sitting out at room temperature. We're going to be separating the egg whites from the uh, yolks, and then I have uh, we have some limes that Jen lemons that Jen went out and picked today off of our lemon tree. We're going to be zesting them and using them for our lemon meringue pie. Okay, so it's nice. VMAC, how are you doing? Nice to see you, my friend. Hope it's a little warmer for you. Oh, lost my hat there. There we go. Stick that on my big head. <laughs> so we got our stand mixer here. And to this stand mixer, I'd like to use the uh, Bob's Red Mill, the unbleached artisan bread flour this stuff is really really good excellent for bread you pay about a dollar more per bag than regular flour but it's definitely worth it uh, so i'm going to go ahead and get my measuring cup here and i'm going to put this is not going to be a huge load 
I'm going to do about three cups. One, two, and then I'll add the four thing to kind of stiffen up the dough here. So there's about the three good cups in the stand mixer. Now I use the typical French way of doing this. You know, until until France joined the EU, the Economic uh, European Union. Hey, Amanda, nice to see you. You were only allowed to make bread with four ingredients. And this was for 100 years because no matter where you went in France, bread was controlled the price of bread. It probably went back to to uh, Louis the Fourteenth and the Marie Antoinette and off with their heads and all that. The uh, storming of the Bastille and, uh, you know, all this stuff with, uh, who was, yeah, Marie Antoinette, let them eat. Let them eat cake or something like that. So France has always been very particular about their bread. And for a long time, it was price controlled. No matter where you went in France, you paid the same price. And the bread can only be made with four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. Nothing else was allowed in it at all. Therefore, the uh, baguettes that were made, they didn't really, you were, they were meant to buy that morning and use that day. They weren't really meant to stay, uh, to uh, keep indefinitely on the shelf like we have bread today. So use it today or else make it into, uh, you know, croutons or something like that. So we have our flour in here. We're going to get a little bit of yeast. Here. This is our uh, baking yeast, and I like to keep this cool. Keep this stuff cool, it lasts indefinitely. I think what we're going to do this is dry, this is for an instant. You can also use some little packets, use a packet of Fleischmann yeast. I don't want this to rise too rapidly. So I'm going to add two teaspoons in there. I don't want it to rise too fast, reason being that I'm not going to be baking this off until late tonight. We're making a we're going to do things to, three things today, Amanda May. We're going to be making a baguette, French-style baguette, which we'll be preparing the dough now and then baking it off tonight. We're going to make a lemon meringue pie this afternoon. Then tonight we're going to make a uh, elegant strawberry shortcake with glazed strawberries tonight. So it's going to be a busy, busy day. Put that away there. And the next thing I want to do is grab the salt. And I'm going to put about uh, tea, two teaspoons of salt in. And salt adds, salt adds structure to bread. It's very, very important to all baked goods. People wonder, why you, why do you use salt in a cake? Because it adds structure. Okay, now we're going to get, i got to find my dough hook here somewhere. It's very important that you have a, hi, Diane. Nice to see you, sweetie. DF not said hi, Jen. I think she might, she might have run outside. I think she's picking some oranges so we can squeeze them. Have, fasting has gone so good. As long as I'm busy, keep my mind off of it. Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, I like to fast all day. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just drinking coffee. Fasting's going pretty good. Of course, it's only 11, 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now to this, I'm going to add a couple uh, cups of lukewarm water here. Don't make it too hot. One, two, and my crazy Cuisinart mixer doesn't stay down in position, so I kind of have to hold it down. So we'll go ahead and combine these ingredients here. Yeah, you've been studying that camera today, Amanda. Go ahead and put this on low speed. We do an initial combining here. What we want to do is take this up to higher speed as it gets going, and we want to make sure it cleans the side of the bowl, and the and the dough goes from going being sticky to not sticky, and that'll show that the gluten has been activated. 
very important. This step is very important for prepping this bread. Once this all comes together, we're going to turn this off for about five minutes. Allow that gluten to come to life. Yeah, that's cool, Diane. I don't know. We'll, we'll either be uh, eating fish or vegetarian. I told Jen to pick out something vegetarian for Friday night foodie. So we're going to allow that to rest for five minutes. That's a very important step in making a good baguette is you've got to let that initial com com coming together of ingredients uh, rest for five minutes or so, and then we're going to crank up the speed. Hey, Mikey, Mike. Yeah, man, it's... Um, you know, I was on the Micro Four Thirds platform for a couple years, and, you know, the learning curve is very steep, but you've got great built-in what they call LUTs or lookup tables <clears throat> on the Sony camera, and they give you all the colorization and all the color grading is built into the uh, software there. So... <clears throat> You know, it's it's better. I mean, my, with my Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera, it's shot in RAW mode, R-A-W, which was super wide dynamic range. It had like, uh, I don't know, something crazy like uh, 14 stops of dynamic range. So the detail was incredible. But the problem was you had to take that footage. Not only did you have to edit it for content, you also had to color grade it in color grading software. Uh, with Rec 422 or all different combinations of stuff that uh, cinema things and it's very very time consuming So it's good. You got to Sony that all that's built into it It's very good to know on that so we're gonna let that rest a couple more minutes and what that does is that flour now is absorbing that moisture and it's setting up that uh, gluten so you want to also have your bowl ready Oh, man, I hate this place. Uh, there it is. <laughs> Looks like I'm ready for action down on the floor, huh? <laughs> Be good now. Yeah, color grading is a tremendous amount of work. Tremendous amount of work. But, uh, you know, I kind of burned out on it. You know, so now I'm, I'm back to sort of a simplification mode. So I've uh, sold off a lot of my gear and stuff. Is that Tess? Hey, Tess, how are you, sweetie? We're going to be a baking frenzy today. Strawberry shortcake, lemon meringue pie, and getting ready to do some baguette. Hey, Carl, nice to see you. I enjoy it, but now getting older when I want to travel and retire and stuff, I decided to, um, I want to simplify more and just uh, get stuff uh, out of the camera and up on the internet. And I'm going to get the get Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, I think. I'm not quite sure. I'm waiting till uh, uh, um, April, mid-April. Tess says, I'm so bummed I broke my camera. I can't afford a new one. I'm using my five-year-old backup. I'm looking at refurbished cameras. What did you? What were you using before? Um, yeah, no, I've, I've, uh, I'm in the process of selling the uh, cinematic uh, camera. <sighs> Amanda May, it's, it's just, uh, you know, it's too much to, uh, too much to do. I mean, it's great to do cinematic stuff. I don't know if you saw my video last Monday. It was called Can a can an old cell phone produce cinematic video? If you haven't checked it out, just using a cell phone. It's not perfect. It has some artifacts. It has some warping and stuff, but it's still pretty damn good. Mikey Mike, today we're making baguette. We're going to be making a baguette. We're preparing the dough now, and we're going to be baking this up tonight on the Hangouts, uh, teeny weeny bikini baking. Today we're gonna be also knocking out a lemon meringue pie. So I'm looking forward to producing that. We have our own, see our own big gorgeous lemons here. 
from the Rancho, from our Meyer lemon tree. Oh, okay, Tess. Well, I'm sorry that happened, honey. You know, you make a lot of good videos, and all this stuff just has a certain lifespan to it. All right, this is rested for five minutes now. We're going to put her back on. And now we're going to start ramping up the speed. You can see it's starting to come together here. I'm going to add a little more flour because I want that to pull away from the sides. <clears throat> I want nothing except a big clump of dough hanging on the uh, hanging on the dough hook. Have you heard Ashkenazi? Yes, I have. I have heard of that. I have, Diane. Yep. Strangely enough, I heard Elvis talking about it, so I'm not quite sure what that name means in terms of. Uh, Jewish faith as opposed to, you know, some of the more Hasidic and other things. I mean, I, I need to be a little more educated. Let's add a little more flour in here. Pick up a little more flour. I want this to be clean in the bowl. I don't want anything sticking to the side. I've always been fascinated. Hey, Smooth, that's tonight. We're going to be making the elegant. Uh, we're going to be baking off the uh, baguette tonight, the French bread, and we're going to be doing the, um, the uh, shortcake. Add a little more flour. How are you doing? Yeah, Hollywood movies take a long time to make them, man. Again, every scene has to be shot, has to be edited for content, and then it's got to be color graded. Every scene is shot raw with very wide dynamic range cameras, and then it's up to the color artist to do all that stuff. And man, that's a lot of work. Okay, you can see now that whole thing is sticking is one mass now. That's what we want to see. Add a little more flour until that really is just one solid mass there. Now that's uh, cleaning the bowl now. Well, thank you, Amanda. It's not my stuff. The secret is now. AMB. <laughs> when you open up Rosie's baby. I'm going to let that go about uh, five more minutes or so. This stupid thing comes up, so I have to hold it down. OK, 
taken out, that's cleaning the bone now. That's exactly the way That's exactly the way you want the dough to be. And then when we take it off of the dough hook, it should not be, it should be tacky but not sticky. See what we got. I'm gonna wash my hands for a second here. And then we're gonna feel that dough. Nice to see you smooth. Hope to see you in uh, Chicago this summer. Fly out for a week. Okay, so yeah, you can see now it doesn't stick to your hands and it is stretchy now. So that dough is perfect. Perfectly done. I'm going to take it off the dough hook now and we're going to turn it out on the counter. I'm going to wash this off here. Then we're going to work it on the counter a little bit. All right. Yeah, Diane, I was up in up and at it at 7 a.m. this morning. I don't I don't like to sleep. I always feel like I'm missing something. I'm not sure if Dave is going to come to Chicago or not. I'm probably going to split my time. I'm going to do I want to see Deb the R and I'm going to split my time three days, three or four days, probably four days in Chicago. I have the rental car and then uh, drop down to Des Moines and then fly, fly home out of Des Moines. Okay, I think we can now put this aside. I'm going to turn our dough out on the counter. You really need a good mixer. I want to get a... Um, uh, KitchenAid Professional, it's the uh, Professional HD, they call it. It's really a good one. But I got to raise some money for that. And I'm going to take a little bit of olive oil. And I'm going to put it in our bowl here. I work 6.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yeah, I get, Mondays I get up at 4 o'clock. Yeah, I hear you. Otherwise, I get up at, I get up at uh, 5.30 a.m. So I feel you. We're going to turn this out on this board a little bit. Flower that up a little bit. Turn that out. And that dough is really nice. It's not, not, real, not real sticky. And look at how it cleaned the bowl there. That shows you got the good. Hey, Coop, how you doing? Hi, Patch. Nice to see you. Happy Good Friday, everybody. I'm fasting today, so I'm subjecting myself to all this baking. <laughs> I'm going to turn that out on the uh, counter a little bit. Work that a little bit. I'm just taking my heel and pushing it forward to the dough. This is called just finishing it. Here, I'm going to let that rest a minute. So it's going to be a long day in the kitchen here. Where the only break's going to be to go get dinner and to go to the restaurant to fly for. So. We finish preparing this dough and let it rise, and then we're going to get to our we're going to get to our lemon meringue pie. And I'm going to be taking that to the boss and Janice tomorrow, along with the bread. I like to just 
do clean up as I go here. <laughs> yeah, it's good Friday. So I usually fast on uh, Ash Wednesday and uh, Good Friday. Just to remind myself, there's greater things than me in the world and in the universe. So, all right. No, all clean. Good, 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 good. good, good. We're gonna need that mixing bowl later. All right, we've got our dough turned out on the counter. Work that a few more times here. Heal that. See how it doesn't really stick to anything now? That's the way it should be. So now we're going to uh, stretch this out into a rectangle, like so. Then we're going to do one third, one third, turn that over. And with your hands pushing in the bottom, Form that into a nice, smooth ball with all of the uh, surface tension. And you can pinch the bottom of it, too. Okay. Hey, Sambo. All right, there we go. Now all we have to do is put that into our bowl, coat that a little bit with the olive oil. And we're going to cover that with uh, some foil. Oh, I keep losing that damn hat. Woohoo, you could cook up a storm. Yeah, that's it. Huh? I've seen that bee cook up a storm over in uh, Belgium there. So let me go ahead and put some foil over top. Now, through the afternoon, this is going to have two, two rises here after about two hours. I'm going to punch it down, work it a little bit, then put it back in the bowl for a second rise. And then I will put it in the refrigerator to retard the rise because I want it to rise slowly. And then tonight when we're done our uh, baking, we'll, we'll, the last thing we do is we'll bake off this uh, baguette uh, tonight. So it'll be kind of fun. But uh, the slow rises are what gives it flavor. Here. Yeah, I've seen some I've seen some MB do some really good cooking in the kitchen. Uh, I should have plastic wrap. I don't know where the hell our plastic wrap. I don't have it. Just sit that, just put that on the side today. I know, how can I fast with working in the kitchen with all this food around? I'm crazy. I'm crazy, Joe. Of course, uh, one look at me and it wouldn't hurt me to miss a meal or three. So I'm going to go ahead and sit this on the side now. Let that rise. We'll check it later. All right. Now it's time to get on to our... Lemon rang pie. Like I said, we picked our own beautiful. Look at the size of these Meyer lemons here from our own garden. Uh, we're going to go over to uh, uh, the Boston Janet's tomorrow. So we're going to probably do the hangout in there tomorrow night. So, okay, so I'm going to clean off the counter a little bit. All right, there we go. Hey, how you doing, uh, Jordan Blue? Nice to see you, honey. Oh, I felt like a whale. You know, Joseph Kane and uh, Joey D. They sent this. Joey D. sent the bread, and uh, Joseph Kane sent up all the um, candy. We plowed like we plowed through that like Grant through Richmond. I mean, we went through that like nothing. Yeah, they're nice big lemons, and it's nice to grow your own. The other thing you need to do when making a lemon meringue pie, you need to have five eggs that come up to room temperature because when we go to whip these egg whites, you need to have it at room temperature. You're not going to have the volume of it. Okay. 
very, very important. All right, so we got our uh, pie plate. I think this is a nine inch pie plate here. We'll put that on the side. Then we're going to get our mixing bowl. And I think I'm going to use a shallower mixing bowl here. Uh, on the shallow so you're gonna bake again I am baking tonight we're gonna to make the tray elegance strawberry shortcake for jinx yep it's gonna be a long day today I know go figure this this damn hat keeps coming off here there we go I need to put these little <laughs> what a dumbass! <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's put our bread flour away. Yeah, it's going to be a it's a baking frenzy today. So tonight's going to be interesting. We're going to make the uh, sponge cake and do the uh, do the strawberry shortcake. I've got beautiful uh, strawberries. I'll show you. Beautiful strawberries out of Salinas that uh, Jen picked up, and I've been—they sat out on the counter yesterday. I like them to be fully ripe. I don't like to use strawberries that are yellow. You like to have the strawberries that are really ripe. So I'm going to pull these out now and let these sit up on the counter today. If you don't have ripe strawberries, you're kind of uh, cheating yourself. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to chalk it. <laughs> OMB, you're too much, honey. <laughs> you better stick to your uh, stick to your Amanda May there. Let me go ahead and get some other flour. Let's I like to use gold metal all-purpose flour. I like to also keep my flour in a separate container. You know, what's really strange to me is uh, these, they've never changed the way these uh, sacks of flour are made all these years, and it's so ridiculous that they've never found a better way to sell this stuff with these, in these stupid things that you tear the top, no matter how careful you try to be. You know, the way they seal it, it's a really, I've already, I've already torn the damn thing. So. Kind of a drag. I guess if you take your time and you don't get frustrated, but I don't have all the patience in the world. Hey, I actually did it. No, you don't see gold medal at Dollar Tree. I don't think. Um, I don't think uh, is gold medal Pillsbury. I'm not sure. Not sure who does. It's General Mills. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see that. So let's put some of our all purpose flour in here. And then we'll fold up the rest of it. Some people keep it in the refrigerator. We go through it, we go through it so fast, I don't think I really have to worry about it. So. Yeah, I don't like the packaging. It's amazing. They never improved. They never improved the packaging of flour. It's really, it's really kind of dumb. So we're going to have an all butter. I don't think I have any shortening left. I 
we're going to be doing a uh, all butter crust here. Normally I do one third butter and one third shortening because shortening helps make it crispier. So let's see, we're going to take two cups of flour and what I'm going to do now is make a crust here. I'm going to use two cups of flour. Don't do that too much. Elvis might think it's dinner time. Let's hear that again. I like that. Let me hear. It's like on the ranch. Dinner time. <laughs> All right, we're gonna use uh, about uh, two cup, two and a quarter cups of flour. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, it's always nice uh, having met uh, Cooper. Just so I never met Jordan Blue, but, uh, you know, I mean, there's so many people I've met. I've met Amanda May and hung out with her. Uh, met Cooper. There's so many people I've met on, uh, on YouTube now. Uh, smooth. <laughs> okay, now we're going to get a little bit of salt. Pop a little bit of salt in. Oh, that Cajun. Yeah, did you see my comment on that video of his? I said that place sucked. It almost killed me, that place. That's why I did a video. Don't ever let Elvis pick your restaurant. All right, so I'm going to put about a tablespoon of sugar in there. Okay, I'm going to whisk that together real good. I've got my whisk here. Real simple. Yeah, I'm going to come up to New Hampshire. I want to come up to Vermont. We're going to film Amanda May goes to Ben and Jerry's. Over in Vermont, there. All right, get that whisk together, good. Now we're gonna crack our butter open here. Pop that in. Make sure this is really cold. And then I'm gonna use. Let's see. I'm gonna have to stop and pick up some more butter today. <laughs> Yeah, I think Gerald's probably back up there. I don't know. He was so angry his last video. It was almost scary, you know. I don't get nothing, so you don't get nothing. Like, what the hell, you know? I always said, if YouTube's not fun, don't do it. Close up that butter. Save that. Put that aside. Yeah, do a Ben and Jerry's over in Vermont. Be a lot of fun. I want to take a little bit of glass and I want to put some water in it too because I'm going to need some very cold ice water to add to this. Okay. Put a little water in here. While I'm cutting in this butter. This will get super chilled. This will keep our butter from melting, so it's very important. Now, I like to cut things in the uh, uh, French way, which is using two knives. Very sharp knife. Initially, break this up into smaller pieces here. And then eventually, we're going to get in here with our hands. And in France, a lot of the uh, pastry chefs, they, just, they train on two knives, and they're really good. Trick is you got to work rapidly so that you don't melt the butter. But we need to cut and get all that into very fine pieces. If you don't like to hear scraping on metal, just turn your just mute your sound. 
I often got complaints when I was baking that it drove people crazy to scrape it. Okay? okay. And that does the initial. I am a X man. That does the initial cutting. Now I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands very thoroughly again. Yeah, I can't wait. We can't wait to see you, Diane. We got some surprises for you too. All right. Yeah, we're going to have fun hanging out today. There. Okay. Make sure your hands are super clean. All right. Take care, Amanda. Good to, um, you know, good luck with the camera. I'm very excited to see what you're going to do with the camera. <clears throat> Now here's the yeah, wash. This is the fun part. Now get your hands right in here and squeeze that butter right into the flour. Okay. You want to do it rapidly. You want to squeeze that so you have butter, butter flakes like that. Yeah, that's good, Diane. Yeah, we can't wait. We're going to enjoy our whole week in L.A. May stay at the W down there. I don't know in downtown LA. So all I'm doing is just squeezing, squeezing the butter right into the flour. Just making butter flakes. The flour is going to be absorbing that moisture from the butter. Let's get you a nice even distribution of the uh, butter in here and your your uh, flour will start to get crumbly which is good give you guys a look see how uh, that's starting to come together there now oh coop is great there's nobody finer i mean coop is a blast i mean he's a perfect gentleman i've uh, i rarely see a guy his age that's so well groomed and tailored I mean, he and his cousin, they look like they stepped out of a GQ magazine. You talk about a good-looking guy. And uh, a perfect gentleman, too, a perfect Southern gentleman. And as we used to say down South, he was raised right. And what a, what a joy it was to meet him. All right, I've got a real good distribution. I don't see any more, I don't see any more lumps in there. Yeah, I love downtown LA too. I spent a lot of time there years ago. So I'm going to go ahead, add a couple uh, tablespoons of water, and then work that dough in from the side. Right, MB Belgian style. Right, I'm ready to go to work in a French kitchen. All right, I'm just lifting it up. See, I'm just lifting it up. They get a nice even distribution. Not a lot sticking to my fingers there. No, I mean that you're not you're not a youngster, you're not old, but I'm just saying you're a good looking, very elegant guy. You know, and you're you're a perfect gentleman. Okay, that's the highest compliment. See how that's starting to get all. It's all wanting to start to uh, come together. We'll add some more. We just add a little bit as we go. All right, look at how that's now really coming together. Got a nice distribution of fats, everything there. And you can squeeze it together, see how it's going to come together. There it is. I can't tell you how many pie crusts I've made. We're going to turn this out on the board now. All 
right. Yeah, Jordan Blue, did you see my video? That FEMA camp has to move now. They got like till the 6th of uh, April to get the hell out of there. All right, look at how all that come together very neatly. We want to kind of work that a little bit, but we don't want to overwork it or else it'll get tough. Okay, we don't want to melt any of the butter. Okay, real good. Now we're going to make that into a disc. Just like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a real bummer for them. So I'm anticipating some trouble. So I might have the camera rolling up there when they try to break down that FEMA camp. Okay. We're going to put that on there. And we're going to rest that in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes while we prepare our lemons here. Okay. All right. <laughs> Get that aside. That looks like it's going to be a great, great dough. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm anticipating there's going to be some real trouble up there at that. Uh, there's going to be some real trouble up there at that FEMA camp. Just never know. Yeah, in French, that's called 1,000 mille failures, huh? I think uh, meal is for a thousand. I don't know, MB. I'm embarrassed to tell you. I studied French in uh, high school, and I can't remember anything except we read uh, Jean Valjean, the Chandelier de la Bec. <laughs> Bonjour, bonsoir, comment allez-vous? Merci, merci beaucoup, merci mille beaucoup. Uh, it's a big mess, Jordan. It's going to be a big, big mess. All right, so we got our counter clean. I like to clean as I go, so I'm going to clean this up. Tastes good. It's important that you let that dough rest for about uh, 10 minutes. If you don't rest the dough, you don't rest the dough, then you can't roll it out properly. Oh, it means thousand layers. Yeah, that's the way they do. Uh, what do they do, MB? They do. Um, the hell is it called? Dash tiny buses to get around. They stop every 10 minutes. That's great. Um, trying to think. Yeah, I lost my train of thought. I forgot the hell what I was talking about. Anyway, Cooper has that effect on me. Oh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's get our juicer now. We're going to go ahead and zest these up. Uh, now the real key, no, yeah, they call it uh come on, what a cross songs, yeah. Croissants are like four turns and folds. It's a very complicated process. I've already washed these lemons. The important thing now is we've got to get the uh, zest off of these. And this is what really ramps up the flavor when it comes to lemon meringue pie. It's the zest, it's the outside of that lemon. And we want to get as much of that as possible captured, you know, even up to a half a cup of that stuff. The more the merrier because that cake will have a real zing to it. It'll be like what I call a punch your face in uh, cake. So, hey, Jen, can you reach this box grater for me? Let me uh, let me let Stretch get this box grater for me. There she is, the woman, the myth. That? Oh, yeah, that. can you get that box grater for me? Sucks to be short. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Maybe make some coffee. 
<laughs> no problem. You're at the fields there. Awesome. All right, so be very uh, be very careful. the crops outside. Want to get all that lush and zest off of them. Watch your fingers. I don't want to see see any blood gone into the bowl. Taking all that all that zest off. Yeah, MB said hi, Mr. Jim. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, babe. Thank you doing well. What about my leaf? MB, we need a condominium on the coast of Florida. Are you up for that? <laughs> Just kidding, honey. Getting all of that yellow off. Don't take the white off. That pit is terrible. It's all big. You just want that top bit. So you're clearing all of that off. Yeah, we have a lemon tree deep rock. These are from our own tree. Jen picked these fresh this morning. Okay. See, I'm getting all that delicious zest. Diane said she likes your peanut for That is a gift from Zoe D. Joey D, yeah, our buddy down in Paris who Zoe gave us all D. that bread. What a beautiful person. Yeah. We got back from our trip and there was a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Welcome home. What an amazing day. We have such wonderful friends, I'll tell you. All right, so keep going. Oh, yeah, these Meyer lemons are insane. They're so juicy compared to regular Portugal lemons and stores. You take your time. Baking should be a fun thing. It should not be a chore. If it's, if it's not fun, then don't do it. You're doing something wrong. Okay, so we're going to get one more. See all that, uh, all that delicious zest. They smell. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells amazing. Yeah, we're really blessed with wonderful friends. There we go. So that should be plenty of zest for our lemon meringue pie. I'm going to go ahead and clean off the box grater now. There's nothing like having your own uh, your own citrus. When life gives you lemons, Jordan, you make a lemon meringue pie, honey. <sighs> All right. Put that box grater over there. Now we should be able to roll out our uh, crust. Actually, I'll probably take a second and just juice these up. Let me get the juicer out here. Jen picked these two from our Valencia orange tree. So after we're done. Uh, juicing the lemons, we'll go ahead and juice these so we have these for breakfast uh, tomorrow for orange juice for breakfast. So stick them over there. We got tons and tons and tons and tons of uh, citrus. Look at all that gorgeous zest. Amazing. Thank you, Jen, for putting the orange juice. This thing has been really nice. Go ahead and plug this in. We'll get our bowl out to put that in. 
Sometimes I wish I had a much bigger kitchen, but it is what it is. Go ahead and cut these in half. You get the uh, where that's closed up. And these uh, these are uh, these are coming to the end of the season, so they got to be used now. Otherwise, the moisture starts. The funny thing about citrus is moisture starts to get drawn out of the fruit. If the ground gets real dry, okay, but you can see they're they're really nice and juicy inside. Put that on there. Does a real nice job of getting that juice out, leaving all the seeds and everything behind. We're gonna try to get a cup of. Uh, we're going to try to get a cup of uh, lemon juice here. You don't have to worry about seeds or anything. George, what are you barking at? Nope, that one just, look at how that one split. Yeah, it's about moonshine and season. So, might as well get all of this goodness. The tangier the pie, the better. Bye, MD. Take care. Oh, Diane. Bye, Diane. Take care, honey. Good to see you. I probably got uh, too much, but I'll make some lemonade. One more. All right, perfect. And I can remove this, clean this up. Uh, well, I'm going to let you see in a few minutes. We're going to juice them up. I think we got, uh, I think Jen picked 10 oranges today. So we're going to juice them up. You'll be able to see the max what we get. We should be able to get. Uh, we should be able to get a quart. Nicely, all the seeds. See how that captured all the seeds and everything. We're going to see in a little bit. Let me dispose of the carcass in here. Oops. We'll take a separate, uh, we'll pour this into a glass here. See that, see the way that nips right out there? It's really nice. Right there. And then we have all of our juice we need for our lemon meringue pie. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It works great, MB. It works fantastic. Okay, so 
Let's go ahead and juice while we got it today. The flying oranges. I want to wash off the oranges very well. It's very important to wash the oranges. Yeah, very easy to clean it. I didn't want something that was going to be a pain in the ass to clean off. That's for sure. All right, we have our own oranges. Yeah, very easy to clean. We got three, six, seven, eight. Yeah, she picked uh she picked that up. There we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll uh do one at a time here. See how beautiful they are inside. They're really spectacular. Let's put our little cup on top here. Just does a really nice job. It also captures all the pith too if you don't like the pulp. Some people do, some people don't. You can add it back if you want. It's just like a perfect orange from the rancho. This way, this can chill overnight. And they're nice and ripe, too. Big, beautiful, juicy Valencians. Already got quite a bit of juice. Go ahead and get our pitcher now and pour off what we have so far. Uh, let's see. Put this right over here. This is a really nice Italian. Hey Shane, how are you doing? This is a really nice Italian style container because it has a top that when you screw this. It pushes out to the side and it makes it real tight. That's quite a bit for the first uh, first load there. So we'll set that aside. And we'll go ahead and we'll cut the rest of them here. Juice them. Yeah, I love this machine. I just love it. It's really nice. This is why real fresh squeezed orange juice is expensive when you're in restaurants and stuff. You know, I hate to bottom YouTube because all I'm saying is stuff these days. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. Okay. Babies are really juicy. 
Is there pop in the? Yeah, they can. You can. The captures the pop here, and you can add it back if you want, MB. I guess most of your citrus comes from Spain. Viva España. We want to use this uh, juice, but these will keep nicely on the tree through spring. You keep it watered, otherwise it'll start drawing moisture out of the fruit. Hey Sherry, nice to see you. Yeah, I'm fasting today, but I'm keeping my mind off the of stuff, so by staying busy. All right, let's go ahead and empty this bit off now. Being very careful in our pitcher. What could be easier, huh? There's what we got so far. That's a good quart of orange juice so far. We got two more oranges to go here. So you can see this Valencia is going to be a real producer for years to come. Oh, you paid 15 euros. Yeah, we were when we were down, we saw Drory and we had breakfast at Purino's down in Largo. It was like four dollars and eight, it was like something ridiculous, like four dollars and eighty-five cents a glass. Crazy expensive. Really expensive. And I thought, what the hell? I'm in Florida, you know. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm going to have seafood or we'll have something tonight. We'll figure it out. I'm going to let Jen pick it tonight. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and drain this off. And you can see what 10, 10 oranges produced. That's uh, 10 Valencia oranges, probably did maybe about a half a gallon. Yeah, that's a lot of juice. That's what Valencia oranges are all about. That is what they are all about. We'll put this top on tight. And this, I really like this Euro Italian stuff. You turn it and it seals it off. Seals it off perfectly. Now we're going to put this in the refrigerator and we can enjoy this for breakfast tomorrow. That's called high living, brother. High living. All right, really nice there. We'll clean this up and get this out of here. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I think we have that garden with peaches and plums and everything. We're very blessed here. I'll take that whole thing out. I think I'll put that in the uh, garbage can. Yeah, right.
We got out of our own garden here on the ranch. So yeah, we're very lucky. Peaches, plums, lemons, oranges, mandarins, cherries, figs, apples, persimmons, two varieties of plums. Yeah, I'd say we're pretty lucky. Yeah, it turned out pretty good. Yeah, a little splash of uh, sparkling wine. I guess that would make a mimosa, B Mac, huh? Wouldn't that make a mimosa? Is uh, champagne and orange juice? That's pretty good. I saw also a lot of people drinking that in New Orleans down there. Yeah, make a mimosa. Is that right, NB? Is that what it's called, a mimosa? You're the elegant one. Okay. Yeah, I think it's a mimosa. You know, I've never had one. I got to try one. I'm not all classy like MB. You can, you can take the girl out of the ghetto, but you can't take the ghetto out of the girl, right? So but it'd be fun to try one. Try a mimosa. Oh, nice and clean. We can get this out of here now. That's great. George, you gone out? Huh? Hey there, Georgie boy. Wipe up the floor. No, MB, I'm the furthest thing from classy, honey. Ghetto proud. I like to keep the floor dry where I'm working. Okay, now I'm going to clean off the counter really well here. They are good. I'm going to have one. Hey, we are baking a lemon meringue pie. Dave, we did the uh, set the dough aside. Here's the whole agenda today. First thing I did this morning was make some um, French baguette dough, which is rising. It's going to rise another hour or two. I'm going to punch it down, let it rise some more, stick it in the fridge, and we're going to pull it out tonight. And after we're done making the strawberry shortcake, we're going to bake that off tonight. <laughs> and right now we are making a Easter lemon meringue pie, which is going to be great. Right now we want to roll out our pie dough, which we made earlier. Oh, a really good counter here. Yeah, I, I like to drink. I'm a drinker myself. I enjoy drinking. But I'm on a fast for Good Friday today, so no booze till after sundown today. And then we can let them rip. All right, so make sure that's really good. Make sure that's really dry. Nice to see you, uh, Dave. All the best to Becca. I hope that she's continuing to uh, recover. I really miss seeing her around and you too. It's good to see you back on. All right. Okay. And there is our pie dough that we refrigerated. And then when you refrigerate it, it relaxes the gluten and it allows it to be a little easier to roll out. So we are going to get our rolling pin. Coming to Iowa, Dave. I'm country girl. Little Miss Debbie. I'm coming. <laughs> Dave is like, holy hell, get me the hell out of here. <laughs> 
Did you give up anything for Lent? Yeah, I gave up sex. No, Mommy. <laughs> Look at these strawberries we're going to be using tonight for making the strawberry shortcake. Jinx's Trey Elegance strawberry shortcake. So, okay, we're going to be doing that tonight. Busy day baking. So let's flour our counter a little bit. <laughs> it pops like I gave up sex as well. Let's flour our counter a little bit. Okay. Let's go ahead and start to flatten our disc out here a little bit. Yeah, I'm just on a, I usually fast on uh, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. It just makes it a lot easier to uh, to roll out. Just keep, keep the flour generously under the bottom of it. That's what happens when you relax the dough. It becomes a lot easier, a lot easier to uh, roll out. So this should be a really great, really good dough. We're going to roll this out to about an eighth of an inch thick. And you can kind of use your pan as a guide, your, uh, your pie plate. And growing up in the South, that's all we had for breakfast all the time was pie. Pie, pie, pie. Make sure you roll it to the edges so you have uniform thickness throughout, okay? Good even pressure. Yeah, Bob, uh, Bob the Builder, a.k.a. Dave, like Rosie. When you come out to Iowa, I'm going to make you bake an apple pie. <laughs> All right, so look at how nice that is now. We sit that upside down. Okay. Now we can take a knife. Let me get my knife here. Let me get a real sharp knife. Clean this off a bit. All right. Take a real sharp knife, and we're going to go out around the edge. Don't take too much off, because we need to flute the edges here. Okay. All right, so pull that off. Okay, and that's going to be really, really nice. We're going to do one more little rollout. We're going to spray our pan, too. Just so we have a nice uniform, nice uniform dough there, okay? Yeah, that's good. We'll let her make the apple pie. I got an apple tree, too. Let's go ahead and take our spray and put it in. And uh, we're going to preheat our oven to 500 degrees. We're going to blind bake it. Okay. The trick is fluting it so it has pretty decorative edges on it. Okay. So now we can go ahead and uh, roll that a bit more. It's still a little thick over there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is gather this up on the rolling pin, just like that. See the way that rolled right up? And then we're going to unroll it right in the pan, pie plate, just like that. Don't stretch it too much. Just let it fall down. Okay. Okay. Take care, Jasmine. Bye, sweetie. Yeah, I'm glad Becca's doing good. That's good to hear. That was a that was a phone call I dreaded taking. You know, Dave's got so much going on in his life right now, and then for that stuff to come down. Okay. So she's laid in real good down there. We're gonna do what's called docking the bottom.
That way the, the uh, dough won't rise up off the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to turn this edge down underneath of itself. All the way around. Work that underneath real good. Just like so. Okay. Just like that. Now the trick is we want to take our thumb and our forefinger and we want to flute that edge or make a decorative edge on here. Hope you can see the way I'm uh, hope you see the way I'm doing that edge on there. You can make that as shallow or as deep as you want. Finish working that right around the edge. And there she is, a nice fluted pie shell. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick that in the fridge freezer now. I want this to be in the freezer. All right, I'm going to stick that in the freezer. For about uh, 10 minutes or so just to firm up it'll hold its shape better when we put it in <clears throat> so let's get our counter cleared off real well I forgot part of the uh, forgot part of the juicer. So we're looking good. We're in good shape. Let's put our flour away now. That's pretty cool, Coop. You're going to be going to uh, Poland in uh, June. All right. Put that away now. So, so far we've got our uh, lemon juice. Hey, Monica, I got my spring hat on. There we go. Got our zest. And we've got our pie cooling down in the freezer. Yeah. Every good baker should have pie weights. And these things are really good for helping the pie keep its shape while it's blind baking. And blind baking means we're just pre-baking that shell and then having it ready to go for the filling and then the meringue topping on it. So these things are very essential for doing a uh, good job baking. They're made of ceramic and they're very heat resistant. And they're a great thing to have in the uh, kitchen for baking. Okay. Happy Friday, Brandon. Nice to see you, honey. Very nice to see you, Brandon. 
Welcome to the uh, Rancho Kitchen. We are in full gear today. We've made French baguette dough. It's rising away. We're going to make a nice loaf of bread to take down to the boss and Janet's tomorrow for Easter. She's having a hanger steak and some other treats for Easter. So we're going to be down there. Jen, don't let me forget. Jen. Jen. Stuff to take out of the Huh? No, I'm just saying, don't let me forget that. I have to take that to them. All right. Yeah, I'm celebrating Easter. I'm fasting today. Let's go ahead and look at our, uh, see how our baguette dough is dry, risen here. If you were there in the beginning, you've seen that that's basically almost double in volume. Now, we're going to let that go in about another hour, and then we're going to uh, punch it down, turn it, and let it have a second rise. All right. Hey, uh, what is that? Antrosia, nice to see you. And uh, don't forget tonight we're going to be bikini baking. We're going to be making a tray elegant strawberry shortcake. And we're also going to be baking off this baguette dough tonight. So it's going to be very interesting uh, night tonight. So we will have produced three products today a lemon meringue pie, a baguette, and a strawberry shortcake. So it's going to be great. I'm going to have, another, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and relax a few more minutes while our dough is setting up. Oops. Jen's like, don't let me look in there and see some messy-ass kitchen. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, she's like, I'm watching. <laughs> hey, JK, nice to see you, my friend. Happy Easter to you and your lovely wife. Yes. Celebrating Good Friday with a fast today, this is Jen and I. And doing some baking. We got a big baking day today. Big, big, big. Our biggest baking day ever. Uh, hey, RV Shadow, nice to see you. First time I ever got a laptop to fix with the battery shorting out and shutting off. Interesting. Interesting. How you doing, Steve? Good to see you. Want to go back and do that again? Yeah, I guess we're going to go to, uh, we're going to re review Amy's Kitchen again tonight. About a year ago, Amy's Kitchen, of course, is nationwide. They're the vegetarian uh, kitchen that prepares a lot of frozen meals that you see in uh, stores. They were founded right here in Santa Rosa. So they had their first drive in here. Take care, BMAC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the flat earth exclusion. The only thing flat about the uh, flat earthers is their heads. Uh, 
uh, all you have to do is see that uh, one half of the earth is in shadow where the other in darkness while the other half is in light. That's all the magic proof you have that the world is round. If it was flat, everybody would have the same. Hey, uh, Dave said hi, Missy Jen. Hi, Dave. How are you doing? How's Becca? So Becca's doing better, which is good. That's you know? good. Wait, I remember, remember when I got that call from Dave and I was real shook up yeah. about uh, Becca. That was really shattering to me, that, uh, that stuff. So let's go ahead and pull our uh, pie out of here, Jen. Be nicely set now. Okay, there it is. We've got that all prepared. And that should hold its shape very well. I'm going to take a piece of foil. You'll do. We're going to put this. Uh, oh, let's see. We're going to line this with the uh, foil. Get it right up to the edges there. Then we're going to pour our pie weights in there. And that's going to keep the sides from coming down. Yeah, don't forget Dave's kiss. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting out to... Uh, I hope we're still on with Iowa. I guess it depends on the Becca's condition. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in the oven. I have a, I have a stone on the... Okay, just sit that right on top of that stone, and I'm going to give that an initial 15 minutes in there. We're going to let that bottom get good and baked. The worst thing about the worst thing, uh, yeah, it's great you're going to meet Coop. The worst thing about some pies is when people make them at home, the bottom is raw, the dough is not cooked, and if you're not going to blind bake like a lemon rang pie. Let's say you were going to make a cherry pie and it had a top one and then a bottom. You don't blind bake that. You put it in the oven. You should put that on the floor of the oven, right down on the floor of the oven for 10 minutes. And that ensures that heat's going to get to the bottom of that crust and cook that thing and make that nice and flaky. Then after 10 minutes, you transfer that to an upper rack. Well, I have a stone in here now for that. So, uh, yeah. So I might actually go ahead and just transfer that right to the bottom right now. But, uh, yeah, it's probably a little too dangerous because I have a rack in there. So we'll let that go for 15 minutes. It should be okay. Yeah, raw dough on pie sucks. It, it kills. It just kills the whole pie. The raw dough. It makes it lousy. So blind baking is uh, blind baking is absolutely uh, critical. So uh, the other the other key hack that you want. Hi, Matronista, nice to see you, honey. The other big hack that you want to understand with a lemon meringue pie is some people make lemon meringue pies and they weep. It looks like it has tears coming down. That sugar dissolving on the meringue and it's weeping. Okay, the way you prevent that weeping is. You put that hot filling into that pie, and you got to slam that meringue right on top at that minute. If you wait five minutes or ten minutes to put the meringue on, no good. No good. It's not going to set properly the meringue, and it will weep. So you need to slam that meringue topping right on top. Okay, very critical. We're now going to separate our eggs. They're at room temperature, and I've got five of them here. And if you get any kind of, uh, if you get any kind of, I'm no pro, ARB, if you, um, if you get any kind of egg yolk in the egg whites, they're not going to whip, they're not going to turn into meringue. So you got to be very careful. <clears throat> got to be super, super careful. And the best way to strain out these egg whites and separate them, take care, MB. Thanks for stopping by, sweetie. Happy Easter to you. Is to use your fingers and make sure that they are at room temperature. I'm going to 
clean my hands very thoroughly. Again. Okay. Really, really well. Yeah, nice to see you, MB. You have a good one, honey. Just let that go right down. Separate your egg yolks from your whites right there. Okay, wash off because I have a little bit of yolk there. Sharp tongue, I don't know what you mean by an interview between Rosie and Becca. I've never had an interview. Okay, there it is. A very good separation right there. Perfect separation. Hey, Tara, how you doing, sweetie? Nice to see you. So, want to inspect the egg whites very carefully. There's no yolk in there whatsoever, and that ain't no yolk. We've got our yolk separate to put into our pie food. Okay. So far, so good. We're gonna get a little. Uh, we're gonna get our saucepan out here. And we're going to put our. We're gonna put equal amounts of juice. Oh yeah, that would be great. I'd love to do that. Yeah, I'd love to do that. That'd be awesome. All right. Yeah, that came up to, uh, that's perfect. That was one, one cup of lemon juice there. And we're going to put uh, one cup of uh, full water. <clears throat> okay. We're going to put a cup of sugar. Let me get my sugar. Uh, thank you, Brenda. I've just been baking a hell of a lot of years here. Grab a little bit more sugar here. Yeah, I enjoy baking. It's very relaxing. Enjoy it very much. Hey, Alan, nice to see you. You know what, guys? It must be National Polling Day today, huh? That's pretty cool. Okay, so that's all of our sugar is now in. We can go ahead and add our zest in. The zest from all those lemons. Add that in too. Greetings from Poland. Tonight we're going to be making a teeny weeny micro bikini baking, midnight baking. We're going to be making a uh, baking off the baguette and we're going to be making a Strawberry shortcake. Big, big night. Go ahead and add our 
egg yolks in there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Cooper's gone to uh, Cooper's gone to Poland. Not too much longer. All right. We're gonna keep our egg whites aside to make our um, our meringue. Okay. We can go ahead and put a little bit of heat on this. We're not going to make this. We need to also put our cornstarch in. Some people use flour. I prefer cornstarch. It's a more neutral. It doesn't really have any flavor. Anyway. If you want a really firm set, you can use two tablespoons. I like a uh, medium set, so I use a tablespoon and a half. I don't want it to be like firm, like a jelly. We also want to stand by with a little bit of butter, too. Once this, once this sets and reaches the set point, we want to put the butter in. That will really smooth out the uh, filling. It will make it amazing. So I want to have that prepared ready to go. I need to also get the mixer down to whip up the uh, egg whites. We're also going to need some cream of tartar. This stuff is very important for producing meringue. You need this cream of tartar, which is the scrapings from wine barrels. Okay, This stuff uh, really helps to produce meringue, and you're going to need a couple tablespoons of sugar, too. Okay, That's very essential. Hope you're all having fun today. Get our pie dough is looking good. Okay. Pie dough is looking good. We're going to add uh, 10 more minutes. We want that good. Cream of tartar comes from the inside of scraping wine barrels, is the way I understand it. <clears throat> We're going to have a good uh, tablespoon and a half of butter. That's going to help smooth out. That's going to help smooth out our uh, lemon filling, make that really luscious. Now the trick is the trick is with this as I told you guys before, if you don't put that meringue down on that filling when it as soon as you slam that filling into that pie shell, that meringue has got to be ready to go right on top, right to the edges, or else this lemon meringue pie will weep. The uh, sugar will turn into liquid, and uh, you know it'll look like your pie is crying, which is not a great look. So. Not a good look. We want to make sure that that pie shell is baked real thoroughly. Start, start combining, breaking up your egg yolks. Oh, you cannot believe the smell of that. It hasn't even started baking yet. I want to add a little bit of cream. I want to add a little bit of cream to smooth it out, maybe a quarter of a cup of cream, heavy whipping cream.
that'll make it that'll make it even more luscious. See the beautiful color of that already. Okay. We're just about ready. As soon as this pie shell comes out, we're gonna let that sit for a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead. And we're gonna whip up our meringue. Okay, and we're gonna be all set to finish off this pie. So let me go ahead and get the uh, let me get the hand mixer out. Okay. Also remember, if you have any kind of uh, egg yolk within your egg whites, it will not produce meringue. It has to be absolute, not even one little speck of egg yolk or your meringue will not, will not uh, set right. Very finicky. Like to use the uh, little wire whisk here to do that. That little whisk, that little whip is a good thing to use. All right. Check our uh, pie shell again. Good. We still got a ways to go. It's a little thicker pastry uh, pastry dough, but we want to make sure that's really cooked through. After about five more minutes, we're going to remove the uh, pie shell from the oven. We're going to remove the pie weights and we're going to put it back in the oven to finish baking. Okay, this is just to get it so it holds position. Okay. Just so it holds its position and doesn't doesn't fall down into the center. Whip it real good. That's it. Let's heat that up a little bit. Yeah, I think this is going to be an epic pie here, guys. Go ahead and add the uh, egg whites to the mixing bowl. And I'm going to add I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar on top. No, I don't know who uh, I don't know who said that about Mindy. You know, I don't like I said on my hangout last night. I don't know. I don't understand everything that came down over there. And I'm pretty renowned for minding my own business, so no, I wouldn't have any reason to have uh, Lindy on my panel. So I don't think Lindy's ever been on the panel. Uh, all She's been on the side chat. I mean, we've we've always gotten along pretty good. You know, I never had any problem with uh, with Lindy, so I'm not quite sure all that went down. Evidently, she's supposed to be some super troll or something. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of mis there's a lot of mistakes people make. Not having critical thinking. I'm gonna go ahead and give these an initial little starter whip here. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's all I'm going to do just to float them a little bit and get them broken up. Yeah, so what do you think about, uh, hi, hi, Linda, nice to see you. You bet, Monica, you can stop by anytime. Just give us a little notice so we can do a little barbecue on the back deck. Lindy isn't to be trusted. You know, I don't really know. Uh, hey, Nomadic, fantastic. Nice to see you. Linda, I just don't really even know. You know, I'm, I've never really been a part of that uh, community. I mean, uh, Lindy uh, said some terrible things about Bobby. Um, you know, but we seem to get along okay. Basically, she says I said stuff about Boris that I never did say. So, but I don't really care. I'm not involved with that stuff. I don't. I don't care about. That's not my. It's not my portfolio. It's not my brief. You know. Okay. All right, Linda. I hear you, girlfriend. I hear you. All right. Yeah, the flat earthers. Yeah, uh, Dave, that's what we should call it, the uh, Flat Earthers uh, Convention. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this pie now and remove the, fly, uh, the, remove the pie weights from it. All right. Sit that down right there. It's where we got to be very, very careful. Yeah, I just I don't have any interest in that stuff. I'm not I'm not into gossip and all that stuff. It's boring to me. Okay. Be very careful because these things are really hot. Okay. Now we're going to pop this back in the oven. Even with pie weights, it still came down a little bit. It's not a perfect world, but it'll be a perfect tasty pie. That's for damn sure. Back in the uh, back in the oven, she's going to go. And we're going to let that cook off for another. 15 minutes. Thank you, Nomadic. Uh, I don't know, uh, Rhonda. I don't know. I just, I don't make those kind of judgments about people. You know, it's not, you know, it's not something that I'm comfortable doing, especially being trans and everything. I got no right to talk about anybody. So, all right. Oh, good. You started vlogging on YouTube. Awesome. <laughs> Lemon meringue. I'm going to go ahead and wash these uh, wash some dishes off here. Better put my timer on, right? I would have forgotten about that. Yeah, bring steaks for the grill, little girl. <laughs> RV Shadow. You're funny. I don't know. I just assume not talk about that person in here. Nothing against them, but uh, I don't have any interest in that. Uh. Yeah, I can't wait till RV Shadow gets on the road. That's really going to be epic. That's really going to be cool. <laughs> there we go. Swagger's camp meeting, baby. There we go. 
I look forward to going back there again and going to another service down there. That stuff's epic. The hell did that come from? What the hell is that? Anybody know what the hell that came off of? <laughs> uh, no, I did not lay this floor tile. I had a guy across the alley that was a disabled on disability for uh, work, and he had He'd been a professional tile layer for a lot of years. I got him to do it. That's about the only thing I brought somebody in to do. I did all the electrical, all the plumbing, all the framing, carpentry, all that stuff. Okay, that's holding its shape good, and it's looking pretty good. So we're getting close to uh, we're getting close to go time, guys. <sighs> Yeah, gonna be on the road. Gonna be on the road. Yeah, it's a really. Uh, this is Sedona pattern, which is the six-inch and twelve-inch tall pattern. Yeah, it's a sex story. Sharp tongue. I got no idea what the hell that thing is. I don't even know where in the hell it came from. I mean, what the hell? How did it get in the sink? I don't know what the hell it is. Let me show you the great strawberries for tonight. For the strawberry shortcake we're going to be making for teeny weeny bikini baking tonight. That's going to be pretty cool. That'll be good, RV Shadow. I enjoy your uh, I enjoy your videos. Okay, the coffee. We're going to be baking that baguette too. <laughs> yeah, it's a dilithium crystal anti. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I know my limits. I don't do tile setting. I do I do sheetrock. I pull electrical. I did the whole circuit breaker panels and all the buildings and uh, no prop at all. Did all the plumbing, all the uh, mortar work. I did a tile setting in the shower when I did the renovation for Jen converting the shower. And you can see the playlist. It was in June of 2014 converting the shower from a uh, bathtub to a rolling below grade shower there so <laughs> yeah. Dave's been drinking <laughs> drinking today so that's starting to set up really good now that five so we want to let that get really baked out good we don't want any raw dough for this five we don't want any of that thank you Linda yeah, thank you. I worked my way through college doing uh, a framing carpentry and uh, all that stuff. So I, I pulled electrical. I did all that. Thank you, Nomad. Fantastic. I'm not the most feminine girl in that. <laughs> they hate my Hawaiian shirts when I put them on. Yeah, let me see if I have my red one just for just for giggles. I think I moved the red one.
All right, baby, here we go. Battleships of the Pacific. <laughs> what do you think, huh? <laughs> I used to go, when I lived in Hawaii, I used to go to the uh, Long's Drug Store and pick out the loudest and craziest ass, uh, the loudest and craziest ass Hawaiian shirts that I could, uh, that I could find. <laughs> I have the planes too. You know, I look like a tourist. I do, I know. <laughs> I can smell dough. This is really starting to smell good now. Really starting to smell good, but we got to make sure it's all thoroughly done. Woohoo! That's it, baby. This is in honor of Fighting Dave. That stiff puncher out of Iowa. <laughs> yeah, Bull Halsey on the deck. That's it. What do we got? The New the Nevada, the New Jersey. They had the they had the Maryland. It was called the Lucky Lucky Mary. It escaped on, didn't get any damage at all, and just steamed out. <sighs> Okay, Alan, more videos about your vintage stereo stuff. You saw I did the uh, rebuild on the STR7065. I completed that project with a recapping, lamping. Uh, hope you enjoy that. I'll do a vintage audio listening experience. Yes, I'm your USO. <laughs> He's like, please. <laughs> We want that uh, we want that dough to end up really nice and crispy on there. In the meantime, I can go ahead and start doing these egg whites. Okay, Monica, take care. Take care, Monica. Nice to see you, honey. Well, uh, Dave, if you like uh, if you like me wearing a thimble full of material, you'll love tonight's uh, baking. Huh? <laughs> Stop it there a while you can you can see we've already got a fairly good start on that. We don't want to overdo it right now. We gotta have everything in the proper sequence here. And then by about uh, about two more minutes or three more minutes, that should be it. That's good. Recapping your krell nice. Yeah. I've got this Chinese, this really nice Raphaelite uh, amplifier. I'll try to, let me see if I can find that video real quick. And you can listen to, you can listen to how great this thing sounds here. Let me see if I can get this thing up here. Let's see if I can open another one here. Let's see if we got the three hundred. Let's see if I can get you guys the link for this. Okay, here's the link. You can go ahead and hit this. 
This is what I'm going to probably work on next, building this. You guys can have a listen to that. That's the Raphaelite, the 300B tube amplifier. It's supposed to be a real legend, that thing. So <clears throat> that's a really great sounding unit. The instructions are in Chinese, so the guy sold it to me for a song, you know. So. Looking real good. We just have to make sure that that's done all the way. And then, then the rest of this is going to come together really, really rapidly here. So it's really kind of the fun part. We can start to turn the heat real low here and start to bring this mix up. But this will have to be continuously stirred. Oh yeah, that's that's really epic. That is epic. Probably a little too early for that. So anyway, that's the uh, Raphaelite uh, 300B amp. I have that uh, kit. It's like 5,000 parts out there in two boxes, and I've had it for a couple years. I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, open this up. Little air in here. I just want to make sure that pie is really done. Don't ever sit hot stuff. Oh, you're on a POS gateway. Is that the one the battery shorts out or something? This um, don't ever sit anything on a hot granite surface. You can you can crack the granite. There's enough moisture in granite. If you sit a hot pie thing on top of it, it could be a disaster. Yeah, gateway. That actually uh, looking good. I'll say maybe just a couple more. It's better to be a little over than under. Yeah, gateway. That was uh, wasn't that an Iowa company. Dave, I thought I thought Gateway was Iowa out there in the countryside or something. Uh, yeah, fixing it. They fried the hard drive. Woo. Beautiful weather. I'm gonna open a couple doors. It's getting hot in here. When I see a girl baking and sweating, make sure to tune in tonight, right? Yeah, it was in Iowa. I remember that. I uh, thought it was very unusual. I can't remember what the founder's name was. Don't forget, you want to have a tablespoon of butter ready to go when this, uh, when this mixture hits its set point. You want to... Whisk that butter in to get that really smooth as silk that filling on there. Okay. You know, I'm pretty happy with that now, so I'm going to pull it. Just be very careful. Do not burn yourself. Go ahead and pull this out now. Oh, they're now an herb on it, huh? Okay. Okay. There is our pie shell. We can now sit that aside. That is ready to go. And that's good. That'll uh, that'll be beautiful. That'll be really nice. Got our pie shell ready to go there. So next thing we're going to do is sit that on the side, and we're going to. 
go ahead and finish uh, whipping up our making our meringue. Thing I'm going to do is gradually fold in some sugar, and I want to get a little bit of uh, vanilla extract. Pop that in. Where the hell the vanilla extract is? There we go. Pop a little vanilla extract in, maybe half a teaspoon. Now I'm going to go ahead and start folding in some sugar, whipping that in. That's not quite a stiff peak yet. Make sure it holds stiff peaks like that. Okay, so we're going to sit that aside for a couple minutes. Okay, and we got to be able to, we got to be ready to slam that on top of that filling. Mm, that's good. Good meringue. Good, good, good meringue. Okay, this is where you really need to keep your wits about you right now because this has got to be done like a, like a fine symphony here. We've got our, we got our meringue is ready to go. Want to make sure you have a spatula all set because you want to take this all the way, all the way to the edges on here. You've got to seal it, okay? And the next thing to do, we've got to make our, take our filling up to temperature and set. Take care, Lois. Bye, sweetie. Happy Easter to you. I'll be on tonight if you're around 9 p.m. on the uh, West Coast, 12 on the East Coast. 
You need to continuously stir this. Absolutely critical that this be continuously stirred. Yeah, that, that pie crust is nice and brown. That's real good. Okay. We're going to take this up until it reaches a set point here. Okay, this is the fun part of the whole process now. We got our uh, meringue is looking good. We'll give that one last quick whip when this reaches the set point. We got our butter ready to go. Ready to throw right in. Make sure you keep stirring. You don't want this to scorch. Okay. Be careful, it's very hot. We're going to use, we're going to have another spatula for this. We're going to have uh, Well, I got another spatula somewhere in here. There it is. We're going to use two spatulas, one for the meringue and one for the filling. We want to make sure this thickens. You'll know it all of a sudden it reaches, it starts to produce very big bubbles come out of it. Keep your heat nice and low. We want to have our oven on to about uh, 300, about 400 degrees. We're going to stick it in so it finishes off with that nice, uh, that nice finish on top of the meringue. Keep stirring that. Welcome everybody. We're on the final steps of the uh, lemon meringue pie. We've got our uh, meringue ready to go. I'll turn that off for a second. That's starting to get good and hot. And I think I'm going to give one more, one more good whip for the white here. Okay. I want as much volume as I can get on this. So. Let's give one more really good whip here. Over there. Is perfect. All right, let's keep this going now. We got our meringue is all set, absolutely beautiful in there, beautifully set to stiff peaks. Mm -hmm. Bring our pie shell back over here. I want to make sure we have our pot holder. This handle could be pretty hot, so you want to be very careful. We don't want to blow it now. Sure that oven is good and hot. Take your time. You don't want any scorching at all. I can already feel it starting. Hey, uh, woo, we did Burger King, baby. There you go. 
Hey, Amanda, we're just ready to slam this pie home. Woo, Burger King, baby. I like Burger King's burgers best of all, actually. I'm not much on Wendy's. I get sick when I had Wendy's stuff. But I think of that woman and put that finger in the chili and shit. I just can't really face down a Wendy's too much. I think about uh, five years ago, I kind of got sick as a dog. Or I don't know whether they were using old meat or what the hell it was. I can feel that this is really starting to get close to a set point now. Have to make sure it reaches the set point or it won't chill out and refrigerate properly. Wow, he got super sick. Yeah, it was about four years ago I got sick. I don't know whether the beef was old or what the story was. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't favor Wendy's too much these days. Take your time. Woohoo! Just got through putting a uh, pot roast in the crock pot. That sounds good. I'm just waiting for this to reach the set point here. Shouldn't be too much longer. Might have to do a little more cornstarch, but I don't think so. I don't like it too thick. I don't like too firm of a set. Gotta wait till big bubbles come up. Still thickening. You just have to be patient and wait for it to hit the set point. be coming soon, I hope. Feels like it's really starting to thicken up now. Yeah, it's getting there, Amanda. But I think I'm going to do a little more. I'm going to put a little bit, teaspoon of, uh, take some cold water and mix up a little more cornstarch. I want that to set a little more. Let me grab my cornstarch. I don't want to, I don't want to have a pie that doesn't uh, set properly. So. Mix up a little more. Cornstarch here. Let me get my spoon here. Better to be safe than sorry. Mix that up a little bit. Thank you, Amanda. You can't put cornstarch right on top of the uh, hot. You've got to pre mix it a little bit. Give us a better set here. Okay, now we can take the temperature back up.
And this should really thicken up now. It's already looking much better. Got to have a certain set point to it where big bubbles come up and burst. This is going to be perfect. Now I'm making a uh, lemon meringue filling here. Just waiting for the final set. If it doesn't reach the set point, it won't firm in the fridge. It won't set. It won't go. Uh, It'll be gooey. I want to make sure it absolutely reaches the set point. I went back and added a little more cornstarch because I have cream in here and the cream kind of inhibits the setting, but it's looking good now. No, I always take off on Good Friday, Bergs. I'm fasting today, so don't mess with me. And now it's getting big and bubbly. I'll go ahead and add our uh, go ahead and add our butter in. We'll turn that off now. That filling should be good to go. Go ahead and pour that in. Get all that goodness right in there. And there we go. Let that sit a bit. Now we're going to slam this meringue right down on top of it. it actually needs a little more, a little more of a whip there. Grab that. Let me take a second while that's still piping hot. Make sure you get all of that. Okay. So now we're going to slowly work that to the edges. You want that to go all the way over to the edges. And you can kind of play with the top a little bit. Now we're gonna pop this in the oven. And we're going to let this finish off real good. Okay. So 
We're going to let that go for about five minutes. And then take a look at it. So in the meantime, I'm going to do some cleanup here. That's going to set up real good. Hey, Berg. How you doing, man? Just do a little bit of cleaning here. Make sure to keep a close watch on the uh, pie. You don't want it to burn. Yep, Burbs, we're going to be making a um, strawberry shortcake tonight. For jinxing you. Do a little bit of cleanup while that's in the oven. What? I can't believe you blocked MB. Are you kidding me? Hey, hey, Teddy. Wow, why would you block MB? A good eye on that. Hey, there's Jen. Hello, Jen. Berg shake. All right. Yeah, it's going to be fun tonight. Fun, 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 baby. I'm not sure. Why don't you unblock uh, MB? Thank you, Teddy. Yeah, it's turning out pretty good. Got our uh, lemon rind pie. It's just finishing off in the oven right now. Man, if you want a good tripod, look at the Manfrotto. They're really the best ones, the Manfrotto. M-A-N-F-R-O-T-T-O. -T -T hey, line screw, how you doing? <sighs> They're really well built. They cost a little more, but they're excellent. They have good fluid heads on them. So you don't have any jerky motion. It's very smooth. All right. Uh, still going along good. All right. Got everything cranking real good. I think I'll leave the mixer out. We'll probably be needing that tonight. I don't know. It's not. It's not cheap, but it's good. You know, it's a, it's a great one. It's, they're just very solidly built. They're not like the cheapo ones. Look at how our uh, bread dough rose. We can go ahead and punch Manfrotto. M A N F R O. TTO. Go ahead and punch this down. We're going to let this rise for a second rise. We're going to be baking this off tonight, too. All right. Yeah, Manfrotto, M-A-N-F-R-O-T-T-O. -T -T okay, right there. So we're going to let that rise again. 
for the second time. Let's check our pies looking good. We'll be taking this off tonight into a baguette. Annie, hi, beautiful. We got Vicky. Hi, Vicky. How are you, sweetie? Are you going to be here for the shortcake bake tonight? <sighs> Let that get ready for its second rise. All right. Let's put our pie weights away. Yeah, we're going to try to make a very elegant. Uh, we're not going to just take take uh, sponge cake and put strawberries on it and, you know, all that. All it is like no good. That ain't what it's all about, baby. Wash your hands. Nice to see you, Annie. How's everything in uh, News NZ today? Let's check our pie. Still need some more time. We want that to look nice and brown on the tips there. Not tits, tips. Yeah, I'm making things for Easter dinner. I'm going to be taking a baguette down to the Boston Janets. And I'm, okay, take care of it. And I'm going to be um, taking down the lemon meringue pie. So. Everything's all pretty much cleaned up. Oh, you use peas to blind bake. That works too. Yeah. Frozen peas. We want to watch it very carefully now because this is the point that it goes real quickly. So when she goes, she goes fast. Yeah, that's good. RB Shadow says. Yeah, I wish you could come. It'd be a lot of fun to have you there, Vicky. Then again, how could I uh, how could I keep my hands off of you? Know? <laughs> oh, Rosie, you naughty! No, I take off on Good Friday, birds. I'm fasting today, fasting till sundown. So I'm keeping my mind occupied by making some treats and stuff today. Just reminds me there's some greater things in the world than me, that's for sure. So. Yeah, why do you block RB Shadow and NB Burns? It's Good Friday, yeah, it's East, yeah, it's Good Friday here. Let's check. Oh, that's looking good, guys. Another minute or so. Another minute or so. Woo! No, I didn't take off all week. I had a long ass day yesterday. I had to drive to Sacramento. I had a long day yesterday. Yeah, I don't like blocking people and all that. Got to keep a real close eye. Okay, just about there, another minute or so. Tonight we're going to be making uh, whipped cream and doing a lot of cool stuff tonight. Uh, we are just about ready to take it out. The big reveal. 
And then tonight, make sure you're back for the uh, baguette bake-off. We're going to do a nice baguette. And then we're going to um, also do the strawberry shortcake. Yeah, the weather is warm here. I don't know about that. Well, I'm off Wednesdays. So, and, and Bergs, what business is it of yours anyway? <laughs> I'm always off Wednesday. Actually, I work from home for Wednesday for about uh, seven hours after I did all that work. Okay, there it is. There it is, guys. There is one. Beautiful lemon meringue pie. So it's got a lot of time. It's got to set and cool off, and then later on, it's got to go into the fridge. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. Nice, beautiful lemon meringue pie. Yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. All right. Boy. Yep, I'm pretty happy about the way it turned out. It's going to take a long time to set them. Get refrigerated and throw. Uh, yeah, it really does look like a treat. Going to take a uh, quite a bit to uh, cool down, and then tonight it's going. Hey, Irish Marie, tonight it's going to go into the fridge overnight, and it's going to be really good. All right, <laughs> Carl, Carl, you're funny as hell. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let that uh, – Bergs, I don't have any masters. I don't really understand that concept of uh, being a master, right? Just be a nice person. Just be a nice person. Uh. So that concludes, that's going to really wrap up number one. You saw the bread. We're going to be baking the bread off tonight. That's now gone through its second rise. After it completes its second rise and I punch it down again, it's going to go into the refrigerator to rise very slowly for its third rise. And tonight we'll prepare that and bake that off tonight. I haven't really decided. We may do a, uh, we might do a big round tonight. That might be kind of fun to do a big round, you know, and that'd be a lot of fun to do a round. I've really not done a round before. It would be a lot of fun, so. All right, wait for that to, uh, let's see, I mean, that's it. All right, guys, well, I'm going to go ahead and crank it down. i got to go to the store and pick up some things for tonight. And I want to thank you guys for being along on today's Hangout. Don't forget part two tonight. We have the big, uh, big Hangout for the uh, Strawberry Shortcake, Trey Elegant. And I hope you guys will join me, teeny weeny bikini baking, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Much appreciated. Have a wonderful rest of Good Friday.